Okay, I'm going to use uh, the Whedon uh, stand and I had to bore out these holes where the crank shaft fit through because it was so sloppy. So I already done that. <coughs> I can, what I did was I clamped it to a knee and I clamped it against this surface right here and dialed that in across there to make sure it was straight and I bored these out actually what I did was I ran a boring end mill and if you don't know what a boring end mill is it's an end mill that's ground with a taper on the end so at the very end of it is larger than anywhere up the shank um, and they're usually uh, undersized so that they leave room for a reamer so the very end of this end mill is the ma is the major diameter and then it tapers back it's like only about a one or a, or a half to a one degree taper back so that's the only spot that cuts is out on the end and that's boring end mill and I went through there with that then I reamed it so now I gotta make some bushings to fit that <coughs> on the lathe and then I'll put them in there and squeeze them in in place with a little can twist clamp so I'll be back once I get the bushings made I'm just gonna make some brass some short brass bushings to fit in there once I get that done then we'll get back on the project because that's really this is really not on the, the project because um, in the drawings I do not use I'm not making it with that stand I made my own I drew up a, a stand by itself so on these drawings you end up kind of making this and that's with uh, the legs and everything underneath so so but this is not in the drawings so but anyway this is the last I think this is about the last part to make is that uh, oh, and a little, uh, a little uh, nipple for on the side for the air, air line to hook to. But uh, when I come back, after I get the bushings pressed in place, we'll go ahead and we'll start on the, and this is the valve, the slide valve. So I will be back when I start doing that. Okay, I made the two little bushings to fit into the to the bores and well, here I'll just use one of these and we'll just kind of get it started I had it there and I took pulled it out just kind of get it started a little bit and then we'll take and press it in place with a can't twist clamp. Pretty snug. Okay. Now, do I want the outside to have the extra or the inside? Because they are just a little bit long. I'm going to leave it to the outside. So that means I got to start from the outside. If I started from the inside, then the, uh, the extra would be in the inside. Because it's only going to press it until it makes contact with the clamp. This one might be a little bit, a little more, a little more difficult to, because I have that rib right in the way to get a clamp on it. It'll stay there long enough for me to.
think it's going in straight. <laughs> She only went so far and I tend to believe that it's going in crooked. It's pretty tight. Okay, I think it's in, yep, it's in flush. Now, will the shaft go through? It collapsed a little bit. A little snug. Let's see if I can run a reamer right through that. I'll take my reamer. Get my drill out over here. Let's see if I can see if I can mess it up. one on this side collapsed more than the front one. Of course it would because it was pretty tight. Oh yeah, there we go. That'll work. That's almost perfect there. Almost. Not quite, just about. <laughs> Alright. So, remember how all this goes together now. This has got to come on this side. Nope, this way. Go this way. Go this way. I might have to make some washers. Um, I should have actually uh, made some washers for. Know, to hold this in place so that goes on there like that stuck in the flywheel here I got the screw loose it's been a little tight in the in going through the flywheel also, apparently. There we go. So that's going to naturally be pulled one way. So then, the cylinder it's on there like that. So the next thing that would go on there would be my eccentric. The eccentric rod. I got to put a press a pin in that eccentric yet too. Yep. That'll work. We're getting there. So now I need to do is make this the 
the slide valve that goes in here and hooks to the eccentric. So, and we're getting there. And then there'll be just a screw and a washer underneath. These holes are big enough, I'll be able to move her around quite a bit. So I'll be able to move it around, get it all lined up. One step closer. So um, put my reamer away and move back over to the lathe and uh, work on that uh, slide bell. So I'll be back when I'm back over to the lathe. Okay, I got some 3 16 brass drill rod, brass rod. Oh yeah, slides through there nicely. So, it's just a matter of uh, cutting the end down and in, in the middle and then parting it off. So, we need to get a 3 16 collet in there. And then I'll have to go over with my slitting saw again and uh, cut it for um, the rod and drill the hole. So if, actually, I'll do that before I part it off. I could almost do that now first. I wonder if I should do that. Hmm, now I have to, I'll, I'll turn it first. I could do it either way. <laughs> I could go ahead and clamp it up and cut that, but I'll have that collar out here and a collar in there. Um, God darn mosquito got me here. Um, no, you know what? No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I am gonna, I am gonna do the slot. In there first. Slot and hole. So we'll move back over to the mill. I gotta clean up the mill anyway. It's still got uh, the knee clamped in there and yeah, take this clamp off the knee. These little knees that I made many years ago have they come in handy a lot. You know, for clamping stuff up in the I got a bigger one too, but it doesn't have the hole pattern in it yet though. And actually it's not a neat, it's an angle block that I started and uh, doesn't have the hole pattern in it yet though. So one of these days I'll set my NC up to drill the holes. Um, what was that other Oh, 5C collar. I see collar block. So, take the I had this all set up the other day. I could have, I should have just left it set up. I had the center line and everything picked up. And not thinking ahead. So we just want to stick that out just a little ways. And we'll clamp that in there so I can clamp up the, the collet. Okay. And now I got to dial in the, the center line again, and I want to drill that hole. Um, drill the hole in there for the pin to go through, which is a uh, 62, I would guess. Yep, 62 thou diameter. So first thing I'm going to do is 
find the setup line. And you've seen me do this a few times. If if you watched any of my videos, you've you've seen me pick up the center. What I do is I put it in there, and then I move it around, and I just kind of eyeball it so the tip of the indicator is not moving around too much, like that. So that way I can come over and bring the ball of the indicator down and kind of eyeball it to the center of the right about there. And so then bring it up, take it in. So now I should lower you down. I don't think you can go much lower. A little bit. I well, can kind of see what I'm doing, I hope. Yeah. Trying to get it to focus on the uh, indicator. I, I'm thinking it's focusing on there. Right, so well taken. Go to the front side here first. Push it in, and then we're going to find the high spot of the R of the diameter here. Right there. Then we're going to move it back and forth, find the low spot. Right there, which is on a 10. Zero. Now we'll flip it around to the back side and we'll do the same. Let me get my mirror out. Okay, we're just going to touch it here and then try to get the low spot. There's the low spot. And we are 16 thou off, so needs to be cranked out to the 8. Right there. Move it around. Low spot. And up and down for the high spot. Zero. Swinging around to the front. I don't know if you were watching my video the other day. I didn't have that in gear, the gear in. I ground the gears. That's the first time I've done that on this mill. It scared the crap out of me. Not good for the gears either. <laughs> All right, so we're a half a thaw from being on center line. I'll just tap it to that. I'll try to tap that half thaw out of it. Sure, like my <coughs> digital readout. All right, so that puts it on center line, and I'm thinking that if I go to the end of it, that would be ninety-three thou in, right? So, see, since I got my indicator set, if I come around here and come to the end of it of the part the material and crank that in is don't move the indicator around go up a little bit picking up a little new hickey on the end of that material okay Oop, went too far. Right there. So now it's zero there too. So it's zero, zero, and then zero. So that means it would be the center line of the spindle is 93 thou in. The reason it is because we had the indicator zeroed out on the 
I don't know if you're following me, but I hope you are. So if I zero my readout, and we want to go to 60, and it's at 93. So, um, I didn't zero my readout. Oh, darn it. Try it again. Yeah, right there. I didn't know if I went right back to the same number. I forgot to zero my <laughs> readout out. Oh, silly me. Uh, so now we're sitting at 93. We're sitting at X minus 93. Point. Oh, nine, three. Ah. Y X point O ninety three enter. All right, so now we want to crank it into sixty. Hmm, I got my X turned around here. I forgot. Oh, I forgot to hit the minus sign. You dummy. All right, try this again. X. Minus point X minus oh I know what I'm doing wrong X point oh nine three minus no hmm Um, I guess I haven't done that before. Switched it from a positive to a negative. Um, how do I do that? Invert? No. Nope. X. X. Oh. Plus or minus down here instead. Minus point oh nine three. And there, there we go. Now move it to the sixty. All that for that, huh? I was hitting a uh, minus, but I wasn't hitting the plus or minus. I hit the uh, <laughs> the minus over in the calculator uh, area, which <laughs> just puts it in as a plus then. It doesn't do anything, it just enters it. So that's what I was doing wrong. All right, so now we're ready to center drill and drill. 62 thou diameter hole there. So I'll get a center drill out. A long one here, maybe I can use that. Yeah, it's, it is in gear. I'm gonna get... It scared me so bad, I'm getting a wrench on it to check it to make sure after having it in low gear. Without real sixteenth, sixteenth drill, go through, and then we'll get the slotting wheel cutter again, and turn this down. Turn my quill stop down. Okay, get there. Now, I'll get the wheel cutter. I left that set up. Did the lights blink? I think they did. We've been having storms roll through 
first the sun is shining and hot and humid out then all of a sudden boom it's raining so I gave up trying to do anything outside <laughs> and came inside to work on on this it's kind of crappy weather out and that has its recorder call it three quarter shake I might have to crank it up I might not be able to get there oh definitely Definitely got to crank it up. Move over and then crank it up. Probably out of view now. All right. Let's see what we're looking at. All right, you're still looking at it, kind of. All right. Bring this down. Or some more. And I'll turn that. I'm going to turn that until it touches. Yeah, that's what I thought, is riding on this. <laughs> you dummy. So it was smooth. I thought I could hear it dragging. Alright. So, this is 30, so we'll go up 15. 15. And then to get it to the center line, well, 93. 93.5. All right. So now, how deep do I want to go? That is 160 thousandths deep. So we'll put it in low. And I'm going to crank it in until it touches. I'm going to move it over here. Okay, I'll crank it in until it touches and then we'll go 160 from there. notice it's got some teeth missing. That's why I was thrown in the trash can and I salvaged it. Uh, works fine for what I use it for. Use it usually for doing slots and stuff. There's 100. Oh, 
Oh, you know what? It's making a lot of noise. <laughs> and I'm surprised I can, I'm getting away with it. It's running backwards. Can you believe it? And it actually, wow. That's got to be hotter than Blitz. I thought it sounded kind of funny. <laughs> well, you've seen it here first. <laughs> I can't believe that it actually cut because it well it's just soft brass so but still that's a little nicer this way. Wow. I, I can't believe I did that. Didn't hurt anything. Well, it's brass against the high speed, so guess who's going to win? <laughs> Not the brass. Mm, slot looks good. <laughs> oh. If that would have been steel, that would have been the end of that cutter. Thank goodness it was just brass. Because I like that cutter, even though it's missing the, the teeth. It, it served me well. Well, that's, that's how you... That's mistakes.